Seven Lamb Productions presents to you End of All Hope Season 3 Episode 8 Cupid Welcome. You can check in at the lobby, and the porters will be here shortly to grab your bags. What? She's joking, Jay. We had made it to the quarantine zone. Tents were still erected. Cars, trucks, and other military vehicles surrounded the area in the woods. People patrolled the top vehicles, lookouts. There were wooden bridges that connected the vehicles. Vertical wood panels and chain link fence filled in the gaps. There were a lot of people. Many were sleeping in sleeping bags or in lawn chairs. We followed Mia and Travis as they took us through the main part of the zone. We followed a dirt path deeper into the woods. Look. Ambridge pointed up to snipers and more lookouts in the trees. Some were camouflage and ghillie suits. Rangers? Up there? Yeah. Mia led us to a tent that sat behind a fallen tree. The bark was splintered at the trunk where dried blood painted the dark wood. This is us. We all walked into the tent. We don't have a lot of space, but make yourself at home. I'll see if we can get you to a cot. The hell you will. You need to talk to Roger. I don't need to do shit. You better talk to him before he shows up here. Uh, it's too late for that. What the hell, guys? A tall, muscular man with shaggy hair and a large black mustache barged into the tent. Here we go. Travis! Hey, talk to her. Travis motioned to Mia and then walked out of the tent. Okay. Well? Here you are. Sammy, Lane. Sammy and Lane dropped the large duffel bags. I don't care about the weapons. Really? That's all you talked about this morning. Can we talk in private? I'm tired, Roger. I don't feel like doing this. We need to talk. Hey, maybe if we just wait a... Not now, Sammy. Mia? What, Roger? I thought we had an understanding. Whatever helps you. You promised me. I did no such thing. Fucking reckless. And, And who are these guys? Found them in the neighborhood. And don't you even get upset about that. Hi, I'm Jay. Cool. Seriously, Mia? What? Were they screened? Do you see them frothing at the mouth? It's like I'm talking to my fucking daughter. If we're not careful... Oh, come on. New people come in here every day. We screen them. Hardly. And what about creatures? None of them spotted us. We took the long way. I don't give a shit. The vehicle attracts them. You guys know that. There's no need to go that far into the city. There are plenty of resources down the road. But look what we got. That shit's not easy to find. And if it wasn't for my knowledge, we wouldn't have it. Excuse after excuse. I don't need an excuse. It's my goddamn house, and I'll go there whenever I like. Roger walked right up to Mia and got in her face. If it wasn't for me and Dana and Gail and Barry and the rest of them... We wouldn't have this place. The military fucked things up. Gave up. We reclaim this, and we will not lose it again. (laughs) Until you leave. What? Everyone knows you're going to take off. That's a fucking rumor, Lane. Well, it makes no sense to stay. Them things are going to find us eventually. They already do. No. I mean the stalkers. The ones that'll march in here and blow us to shit. No problem with them yet. (laughs) Yeah. Roger paced back and forth while everyone remained quiet. Mia, you volunteer to help. Just like Kylie, Sammy, Lane, and Travis. Just like Isaac's group. Just like Maria's. But for fuck's sakes, don't put us in more trouble. We only have so many vehicles, and if those thrashers get close enough, they'll take out the ATVs and bikes. 
Not only that, if you lead one of the herds here, they're concentrated in the center of the city. It's risky, okay? We're careful. But I told everyone they don't have to come next time. I'll go by myself. <sighs> of course you will. Let me see the weapons. Sammy and Lane opened the large bags to reveal stacks of assault rifles, shotguns, pistols, revolvers, magazines, shells, boxes of bullets, knives, and tactical equipment. This is good. This is fucking good. We know. Roger stood as Lane and Sammy zipped the bag shut. Thank you. He grabbed the bags, threw them over his shoulders, and walked out. Well, that could have gone better. It also could have gone worse. It's over. Mia walked out. She's not going after him, is she? I mean, he said thank you. No need to poke the bear. I mean, I mean, prod the bear. No, wait, it's poke the bear. Is it poke or prod? What, what do you do to anger a bear? What the hell are you talking about? Ugh, never mind. We going with her next time? You know she ain't going to stop. I don't know, Lane. I'm going to sleep. Um, Mia said something about cots for us? There are no cots for you guys. You saw them people sleeping on the ground out there. I'll find you some blankets, but that's the best I can do. Oh. I know you're looking for family, but I would suggest waiting till the morning. That's fine. Kylie left and returned a moment later with two small gray blankets. Best I could find. It'll do. Thank you. Ambridge and I went to the far corner of the tent next to a couple of large wooden boxes. I put the blanket on top of the ground and laid on it. Ambridge leaned against one of the boxes and went through his backpack. You're not tired? I'm not going to be able to sleep. Why not? There are a lot of guards. Should be safe. If there's one thing I've learned, it's that nowhere is safe. Go ahead, man. Get some sleep. Now I feel bad. Why? I feel like I get more sleep than you. Although. Although what? I, uh, never mind. What is it, Jay? I, I haven't slept well. I've been having nightmares. That shouldn't be a shock. About Harris. Ambridge froze. I've, I've had nightmares of that night. Okay, Jay. I just didn't know if I... I told you I don't want to talk about it. Okay. So, do you think your parents are here? I don't know. I can help you look tomorrow. Okay, man. I made sure the safety was on and put the gun under my backpack, which I used as a pillow. I rolled over onto my side and faced the tent wall. It took a while before I was able to eventually fall asleep. I once again had a nightmare. This time Harris turned and chased me through the woods. I wiped sweat from my forehead and got up. I saw the sun shining brightly outside. I checked to make sure my gun was still where I left it. It was. I slid it into my waistband. Oh God, finally you're up. I spun around to see Kylie jogging up to me. Your friend, he said he was leaving, that he had to leave the zone. What? He said to tell you good luck, but he had to go. I tried to stop him. Are you serious? I jumped up and threw my backpack over my shoulder. When did he leave? Why? Why would he do that? Did, did he say where he was going? What the hell? 
<laughs> oh my god. Calm down, dude. He didn't leave. What? What are you talking about? Just having some fun. What? I'm fucking with you. He's out looking for his family. Told me to tell you. What the hell? <laughs> Sorry. No, you're not. Relax. Your boyfriend will be back shortly. He's not my boyfriend. <laughs> Kylie walked over to her cot and sat. She pulled a can of food out from under it. She used a manual can opener to open it. Sure he isn't. He's not. Why do you get so easily offended? I don't. Are you a homophobe? No! <laughs> Jeez, I'm just fucking around. I'll stop. I know. I mean, I knew you were. Ambridge wouldn't leave me. We're friends. Yeah, okay. That's why you nearly shit yourself. No, I... I didn't... I just thought maybe... Maybe he... I knew you were messing with me. Sure, guy. My name's Jay. She sat back and eyed me for a good ten seconds. What? Nothing. I set my backpack down on one of the wooden crates. What kind of gun is that? She was staring at the grip of my gun, sticking out of my waistband. I don't know. A handgun? Do you know how to shoot? Her eyes squinted as she smirked. Yes, I've fired it before. Okay, okay. You know, it's the end of the world. You need to develop some thicker skin. She used an old fork that was lying by her cot to eat the contents of the can. It was ravioli. Have you fired a gun before? Yes. But you prefer a bow? I do. Ever fire one? No. I can show you if you want. No, I'm fine with my gun. <laughs> okay. I walked over to the tent door and pushed open the flap. The sun was bright. A flock of birds flew overhead, just above the tops of the trees. If you're looking for your friend... Actually, I was wondering, where are the... bathrooms? Bathrooms? You're in the woods. Really? There's people everywhere. <laughs> How the hell did you make it all the way from New York? It wasn't easy. There are some porta potties at the far end of the zone. Follow the main path. They're to your right. Do they have toilet paper or do I need to bring leaves? You don't need leaves. At least, not yet anyway. I left my backpack in the tent and headed out. A breeze blew through the trees. I watched the branches rock overhead. There were tons of people outside. People talking, counting supplies, playing cards, checking weapons and building fences. Changing clothes, eating, drinking, and sleeping. It had been a while since I had seen so many people. It was calming in a way. I headed up the path through the dense foliage. There were a few open areas with parked vehicles. I saw two school buses next to each other with a crowd of people standing around. A tall, balding man with bushy eyebrows and dressed in dark clothes stood atop the nearest bus. He had his hands clasped together as he talked to the people below him. And thus, we must embrace the Lord and everything he has given us. I know, you see this turmoil and you think to yourselves, why? Why would this happen? Why would he let this happen? Well, it was known, I tell you. This was foreseen. While no human being knows when the world will end, the Bible makes it known that there will be signs. There! There! In the sky, over the city of Denver, we shall watch the world burn. That, that is your sign. For all the sin, we shall watch the world burn. And burn, it has. We have been pushed to the brink. And it is only a matter of time before he returns. What can we do? Pray. Pray like you never pray. The Lord knows when the world will end. And he, only he, 
will be able to guide you. But you, you need salvation, and it is that for which you will find your way through the gates of heaven. I walked towards the crowd and stared up at the preaching man. He walked back and forth along the bus's roof. But maybe there is another way. We shouldn't hide and cower here in the woods. This is the time. This is the end. The end that has been forthcoming. The end that we all knew was bound to happen in our lifetime. You may not want to believe it, but it is here, in the sky. And instead of hiding, we must face them. Talk to them. No, there will be no loss. For if they strike us down, we have the Lord and Savior to protect us. Death should not scare you. As long as you confess your sins and ask for forgiveness, then you shall be in his guidance. Hey, uh, what's he talking about? Preacher Smith believes that we may communicate with the aliens, that they may be part of God's plan. What? He believes they were sent here for a purpose. They may hold the wisdom. What wisdom? But the woman didn't answer. She just slid past me and got closer to the preacher. We must talk to these beings. The beings that most likely helped build the pyramids, Stonehenge, and other great wonders. These beings are advanced. We have seen them. We have seen their technology. It is time to approach them and ask the questions. We so want answers. Yes. Preach. If they choose not to guide us, so be it. For we have Christ to fall back on. This was getting weird. I decided to slip out and find the porta bodies. That must have been a hell of a shit. N- no. I-, I was watching the guy in the buses. The one talking about God and the end of the world. Oh, don't fall for his bullshit. He was telling those people that they should talk to the aliens. He's been preaching that for weeks now. He believes they may have the answers to the afterlife. There were a lot of people listening. And each one of them is a nutcase. Stay far away. Is it really that bad? The guy goes by the name of Preacher Smith. He's already tried to get Roger to lend him the buses so they can all pile in and drive into downtown Denver. Really? He's serious about talking to them. Little does he know that they won't talk. Me and I have met those things face to face. They aren't here to chat. They aren't here to negotiate. And they aren't here to supply us with knowledge of any afterlife. That guy is going to get a lot of people killed. Jesus. And his followers. Jay. Ambridge! You're awake? Yeah. Did you... did you find your parents? No, but this quarantine zone is larger than I thought. Do you want help searching? No, that's okay. I was just stopping in to see if you were awake. I heard a lot of newcomers came around last week. They set up additional tents north of here. Ambridge threw his backpack into the corner. He had a granola bar in his hand. You sure you don't want any help? I'm all right. Stay here with the stuff. But... I'm okay, Jay, really. You, You don't even know what they look like. So, I take it he's the one who wears the pants? He's not my boyfriend. (laughs) Stop being so uptight. 
I didn't respond. I went to the crates and sat down. I felt useless. Kylie pulled out a Time magazine from under her cot and laid down. She flipped through each page slowly, licking her fingers as she did. I felt like I should be doing more. Maybe I could start asking around about a vehicle. We needed one. I saw some when we came in, but I doubt there were any up for grabs. And we didn't have anything to barter with. The minutes ticked by slowly. I should at least go find us more food and water. Are you just going to sit there and mope? I'm not moping, but I hate waiting around. If you want to help your friend, just go out there and help. But he's right. I don't know what his parents look like. I did see photos of them in their house, but I couldn't remember. Well, do something. It's awkward with you just sitting there, kicking your legs and staring at me. I'm not staring at you. Sure you're not. She went back to reading her magazine, but I saw her eyes glare at me over the top of the page. Jesus. What? Here. She sat up, reached under her cot, and pulled out a bow. Want to learn to shoot? Arrows? Yes, Cupid. Come on. No. I have to watch the stuff. You left your bag here when you went to take a shit. Yeah, but Ambridge said... I mean, his bag is here, too. (sighs) She came over, grabbed our backpacks, and threw them under her cot. They're safe there. How do you know? Because Roger set us up with security. We're supply runners, and he makes sure we don't have things stolen while we're gone. 24-hour surveillance. Are those the people in the trees? Some of them. She grabbed her bow that was leaning against the cot's foot bar. She handed me one and put the other around her shoulder. She then grabbed the sheath of arrows. But I have a gun. And when you run out of bullets, you'll be out of bullets. They aren't easy to make, but you can always make more arrows. I don't know how to make arrows. Jesus Christ, you're sitting around moping. It wasn't. Come on. She grabbed my arm and pulled me out of the tent. Are you sure our stuff is safe? Yes. We headed along a dirt path, past a row of supply tables, crates, and spare tires. We went over a small hill and headed towards the wood line. I could see the preacher, still preaching to his disciples in the distance. They were all bowing their heads and praying. We eventually reached a row of trees with blue paint. Here we are. Where? My shooting range. See those marks? The blue circles on the trees? Targets. She unsheathed an arrow, handed it to me, and helped me load it. Okay, Buttercup, let's see what you got. But before I pulled the string, we heard the ship. We both spun around to see the majority of the people in the quarantine zone staring off towards the noise. The whole area was quiet. Still. I've never heard that before. There's been a lot of weird sounds recently. What does it mean? I don't know. But I don't think it's good. See, my children? They call to us. We must greet them. We must show that we are different. We must prove that all we want are answers, not war. The preacher was pointing towards the ship as all the people below him smiled and clapped. Come, it is time. End of All Hope Written by Robert M. Lamb Edited by Isa Yazdezade Starring Hope Ennis as Ava Nick Engelhard as Mark Adam Jetmore as Jay Jack Austin as Ambridge Jody Swenson as Stephanie Catabelle as Madison Chris Titoli as Teddy and Preacher Smith Ariel Hack as Mia, Gina Coyle as Kylie, Brett Wilkins as Travis, Gareth Thomas as Sammy, Michael Moman as Roger, and Crystal Hall as Lane. Co-starring Amber Simpson, Amy LeRae, 
and Robert M. Lamb. Music provided by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com, Eldritch Chachala of Nemesis Black at ReverbNation.com slash Nemesis Black, and Amberlynn Nicole at YouTube.com slash Amberlynn Nicole. If you enjoy this podcast, don't forget to rate and review. Visit www.7lamb.com for other audio dramas such as this one. This has been a Seven Lamb production.